everybody, it's Justin. Welcome to Live Ask Me Anything number 91. Crazy, 91, that's a significant number. I just pretend they're all significant numbers. We've been doing this for a really long time. I don't even know, that's almost two years, right? We're coming up on two years? What am I gonna do for two years? I have no idea. I'm gonna think of something fancy to do. So who is here? Somebody talk to me. Clovis Culture, now live. What's up, Judy? How are you? All right, I got a bunch of cool questions that were submitted at ama.iamclovis.com. But first, I gotta let you guys know a couple things. The Anthony J podcast is live. You have to check out this podcast. That's with Dr. Anthony J, author of the book Estro Generation. And um, that the, the episode was just fantastic. I mean, we talked for a long time off camera and then a long time off camera afterwards as well. And we got into like some crazy sauna stuff that I wish would have been in the episode, but the episode itself is fantastic. We do a deep dive on like hormones. We talk about cholesterol. We talk about early onset puberty, which is scary. We talk about obviously estrogenics. We talk about soy. We talk about plastics. We talk about personal care products. We really go deep. We talk about the vegan diet. Um, and we talk a lot about medical mainstream and corruption and research and big food and pharmaceutical companies. And Anthony's just in the thick of this all the time. He's literally worked for the US government. He's responsible for a lot of the research coming out right now about infrared um, light therapy, which you guys know that I love. Um, I have an infrared saw in my house. So yes, the in case, you newslet- in case you missed it newsletter went out today as well. It also had information on the actual sauna that's in my house. So uh, check that out. If you're not in the in case you missed it newsletter, just let me know and I get you on there. So that podcast is going to launch. And then I literally just wrapped just a couple hours ago and stuck some food in my face before I chatted with you guys, but um, wrapped a podcast with somebody named Will Clyden from a company called Ohi Energetics. And this has got to be one of the craziest podcast episodes I've ever done. It was amazing. I mean, we go into the weeds, him and I, on our like esoteric beliefs of the human species and how we are evolving right now is really crazy. But it was meant to be a deep dive on CBD products, and it was. It does not disappoint. This is like the most extensive podcast I've ever heard on CBD. So I asked some of you guys in the Clovis groups for questions earlier today. I answered all those questions and then some, and we went deep, deep, deep into the endocannabinoid system. We talked about receptors in the body. We talked about what CBD is good for. We talked about CBD in children. We talked about how to find accurate dosing, how to find good brands versus bad brands, the legality of CBD, the history of CBD and hemp products. Holy crap. It was amazing. One of the best podcasts I've ever done. I could have talked to this dude for four hours. We both were like, dude, I'm really sorry. I have to go. We got to do this again. We got to do round two. It was amazing. So I cannot wait for that episode. So before we dive here in here tonight, click the happy button, click the love button, the smiley button, the thumbs up all the emojis that they give us, click all of them. Remember, this is on the Clovis Culture Facebook page, which is public, so you can actually click the share button directly. You can share this on your timeline, like Kayla just did. Thank you so much, Kayla, for tagging your friend. You can tag your friends. If you tag your friend's name, it'll put them in the comments, and it'll bring them here to this video if they're on Facebook, so they can see this live if they've maybe never seen this before. Look, you can tell that I'm at my mama's house because of my cool Luke Bryan cup. Check that out. (laughs) But anyway... I got some really cool questions uh, for today, and they're kind of wide ranging, a, a, a large number of topics. So this is going to be fun to dig into. So again, happy button, love button. What's up? Oh wow, geez, Kayla, you tag a bunch. This is excellent. Yeah, tag all your friends. The more people you can tag, the better. This is wonderful. The more comments and stuff, the better. The Facebook algorithm likes that, so more people will see Clovis content, which is really great. Okay, thank you guys so much. Keep that up. All right, so let's dig in here. Let's see which one I want to start with. I wrote down a few of them here that were really cool, and I didn't really put them in a particular order for today. So let's just start from the jump here. Uh, First question. Question. Hey, my boyfriend is a plumber and wants to add water filtration directly to our pipes in our house like what you did. What brand of filtration system do you recommend or that you went with? Okay, so... Basically, I wouldn't really worry much about the brand here. I would just, except for the drinking one. So we're going to get into that. Now, I will explain what happened in my house first. So I don't know if I've ever explained this fully, but I got really lucky in my house. I moved into my house and it had a whole house water filtration plus water softening system. Um, I think brand new, the thing's like $5,000 or something crazy. It was literally in my house when I toured the house and like before I made a bid on it and everything, I looked at my brother and was like, do you see that system in the garage? 
And he's like, yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's like several thousand dollars and we shouldn't tell them what they're sitting on here. Like, let's just, this is crazy, right? So mine is a rain soft. And then as soon as I moved in, I had it serviced. I have it regularly serviced, which is like a carbon filtration system, removes 300 plus chemicals. And then there is a salt. I pour salt bags in there to remove calcium and magnesium. It actually softens the water. It's really crazy. Like even without soap, really soft water, if you ever showered with it, almost feels like lotion. It's really interesting. So anyway, so what I have is a whole house filtration system, but then I have a really nice, I got a killer deal. I mean, I mean, once in a lifetime deal on a really, really fancy Gen Air brand refrigerator. And that has its own carbon filtration system built into it. So I have a whole house filter and water uh, filtration and softening unit. And then the water pumps into the refrigerator with another carbon filtration system. And that is what I use specifically for my drinking water. Um, so that's the system that I have in my house. That said, you can do this way cheaper now in 2019. So obviously Rainsoft is one like big giant brand that does drinking filtration systems. They do whole house softening systems, but you can get what's called a whole house carbon block system. And you can actually just get on Google and type this in. Like you could do it right now, not right now, just go like, don't do it right now. Finish the AMA, watch the AMA, right? But you can literally just Google like carbon block whole house. And you'll see there are these units now, particularly if your, your boyfriend's a plumber and can hook this directly up to the pipes. I mean, awesome. You can get away with this for like a couple hundred bucks, literally. Um, just do your due diligence on reviews and stuff like that. Obviously, I, I've only used the brand that I have, um, but you can get these carbon block filtration systems right at Home Depot, install those in the house. And then I would recommend a secondary unit for your drinking water specifically. So with drinking water, the cream of the crop right now is these Royal Berkey systems and Royal Berkey systems are, you know, a couple hundred bucks. I think like the biggest one they have is like 300 bucks or something like that. And this is just, again, another carbon filtration system. But what's cool about Berkey is they have these add-ons so you can get like an additional filter that's for fluoride for an extra 99 bucks or whatever. So they have like a, a, a fluoride filtration system. I think they have like multiple other attachments that you can put in this thing. I think that they're pretty customizable, but a lot of my friends have the Royal Berkey systems and really, really like them. Whole house filtration you can get for super cheap now with these carbon block systems. And then it gets a little more expensive if you start digging into the realm of like doing whole house filtration plus the whole house softening. I really do recommend the softening. It's it's pretty fantastic. And I know that like um, when my little sister was living with me, she would just comment it on it on as, as a girl, right? Like her hair is just super soft. And now she's got like her own apartment, own water system. And she's like, it's just so different. I feel like my hair is brittle, right? Like the, the whole house um, softening system is really cool too. And I think they have those now with salt. And I think they have salt-free systems. We can actually do whole house water softening without salt. I'm pretty sure... Um, yeah, Mike, you can get into reverse osmosis if you want to. I mean, there's, there's an endless rabbit hole you can go down here with, but honestly, if it were me and I was just trying to do this right now in 2019 and I was trying to not break the bank, I would get a carbon. If I'm just thinking about like filtration, right? Forget about the water softening side of things. I would just do a carbon block system. Um, I would get like the highest reviewed one, you know, whatever. I'd maybe look up some consumer reports or something like that. Get the highest rated carbon block whole house system for just a few hundred bucks. And then I would get myself a Royal Berkey system. I would obviously probably throw all the add-ons on it, including the, the fluoride filtration system or anything else that you go to their website and you can, you can scour this stuff. But really cool that you have a boyfriend who's a plumber as well because I certainly would not know how to install this thing. I'm the least handy dude ever. I fixed and helped my mom with the window today and cut myself open because I'm super handy, everybody. Yeah, I'm good at stuff. <laughs> All right, so that's the water filtration system question. If you guys have any uh, additional questions, remember, I obviously want you guys to, to ask questions here because I don't always just want to come on here and be like, hey, let me tell you this, that, and the other thing. There's this question and answer that and then just ignore you guys here in the comments. I want you to be commenting, telling me about your systems. What do you guys have in your house? What questions do you have? Um, I really, really like this model of AMA where I'm just specifically answering questions because this gives me an opportunity to almost have a real-time conversation with you guys as close as we can to without audio, right? And I don't have anything prepped today. I'm obviously here at my mom's house for the night. There's an Airbnb guest in my house for the next week. So I leave for Rhode Island um, early tomorrow morning and I will be gone until Monday evening and then back um, back in the swing of things. 
I guess it was on Tuesday. So I'm going to go home and visit some, some friends who have had new babies and such and just chill and spend some really good quality time with them and hang out in Rhode Island. So uh, maybe we'll do some kind of whiteboard presentation when I get back because there's a lot of uh, uh, things. Oh, excellent question, Amber. So you are not subscribed to my podcast. I take it. Tisk, tisk, wink, wink. The Clovis Culture Podcast on Apple Podcasts and Google Play and Stitcher and Overcast and Spotify and all the things. I'm the best salesperson in the whole wide world. <laughs> all right. So uh, what is your take on phytoestrogens and soy? I literally just did an entire podcast about this, and I think it's like 90 minutes long. So I had the author of the best-selling book, Estro Generation, on my podcast, who is an expert. That book is about the top 10 estrogenic compounds that we have to worry about. He calls it his top 10 list to avoid. These are phytoestrogens, um, estrogenics, obviously soy. In the case of soy, we're talking about isoflavones. Um, we even talked about flaxseed and lignans, different kinds of phytoestrogens, microplastics. We talk about hormones, cholesterol, puberty, all the stuff. So you need to go to the Clovis Culture Podcast. This is episode number 18. So if you go to Clovis Culture Podcast, just search for number sign 18. It's Dr. Anthony J. And we literally do almost two hours on estrogenics. So it's much better to just jump on that than for me to try to recap all that here. But my take on it is soy is terrible. I wish we could literally remove soy from the planet. Maybe not to that degree because it is a plant that exists in nature and is part of an ecosystem, but it is not fit for human consumption. I repeat, I will challenge anybody on this. It is not fit for human consumption, period. Nobody should be eating soy products. Yes, there are people that do like adamame in really small amounts, but it's like these mega, do like tofu is a mega dose of soy or soy oil, soybean oil. Are you kidding me? That's a waste product that companies turned it into oil to sell to dummies who would buy it. Us humans is not fit for human consumption. Soy is terrible. And these phytoestrogens, I remove them completely. I have a top, my, my house is free of toxic chemicals. I have an approved products list on the Clovis website, iamclovis.com. You can get my approved products list, how to remove these toxic chemicals and phytoestrogens from your home. I think it is huge. It is hugely important. It is low hanging fruit and people need to do this stuff. They don't wanna hear about this because it's in their deodorant, it's in their makeup, it's in their shampoo, it's in their conditioner, it's in their shower lining, literally. And it's just crazy. So low hanging fruit, I think it's important enough that I had Anthony J on my podcast and it's one of my favorite podcasts I've ever done. The guy is brilliant. And um, yeah, that's my take on phytoestrogens. Hugely important. If you haven't read the book, Estro Generation, read the book, Estro Generation, for sure. Um, but listen to my podcast first because you'll get a lot of what's in um, Estro Generation in the podcast. OMG, yes. Go download it right now. Jessica, Anthony J, so good. Yes, it was amazing. They're putting soy in everything now. It's unreal. And they had that shit in the ingredients list. Yes, I've talked about this before. Your entire, entire, entirety, there's a new word. Your entire grocery store is loaded with wheat, corn, sugar, and soy. That's it. Those are like the top four ingredients. Wheat, corn, sugar, soy. It's in everything. 99% of the ingredients in grocery stores are those four things. And 99% of the products in your local grocery store, by my standards, are inedible for humans. I truly believe that. Truly, truly believe that. Okay. What else we got here? Do I even ask how your take on the team game changer movie? Oh, the game changers. Yeah. My mom saw it. It's 100% determined plant-based. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now this is not your mom's fault. Um, that movie is particularly problematic. Um, but if you are someone like me who understands biochemistry, who understands regenerative agriculture, who understands soil, the health of soil, who understands mycorrhizal fungi, who understands capturing carbon from the atmosphere, who understands all these things, nobody understands this shit. Okay, that's the problem is the people that make movies like Game Changers, they know what they're doing. It's predatory behavior. They are literally preying on an uneducated general public. So the reason why your mom is now, you know, screaming plant based from the rooftops is because your mom knows exactly nothing about biochemistry. This is why. Now, I'm not picking on your mom. I'm saying your mom is 99% of the population, right? The things that they say in this movie are such lunacy. It is absolutely ridiculous. And there are so many takedown articles on this right now. Like literally just Google the Game Changers debunked or the Game Changers on it, O-N-N-I-T. If you search the Game Changers on it, 
that great um, by Onnit, which is really unbiased. They make plant-based products. They literally have plant-based proteins, and they wrote a takedown of the Game Changers movie. Um, on top of that, Paul Saladino, Carnivore MD, he has an article on his website, which is not written by him, by the way. Everyone's like, well, of course he doesn't like it. He's a carnivore. This wasn't written by a carnivore. It was written by a nutritionist, and he shared it on his website. So it is absolutely terrible. It's It might be worse than What the Health. What the Health was a nasty plant-based propaganda made by vegans, literally funded by vegans. It's all political nonsense. Game changers are the same thing. Now, the other thing to remember here, this is the biggest point that I'll make in case anybody wants me to specifically attack this movie, right? So they're talking about athletes. They're taking super athletes, right? These are super athletes that became super athletes on a standard American diet the entire time. They're de you're dealing with these athletes in these movies that are like, oh, I've been plant-based for six months, so much better, right? That's because they were eating bags all through Division I college and eating a shitload of protein, right? They were living mostly on protein and carbohydrates. This is what all athletes do. This is what I did when I was 15 years old and a bodybuilder. When I was a boxer, it was all protein and carbohydrates, protein and carbohydrates, protein and carbohydrates. This is what all bodybuilders do. Lean chicken breasts, brown rice, right? This is what all athletes do. And then what happens is they're on this nasty standard American diet. All of a sudden, they switch to plant-based, which is all they're doing is removing processed foods. They're removing processed foods and sugar and switching to a whole food diet. Like I say, eat whole foods, change the world, right? So of course, they feel better. Catch up with those same athletes two years from now and the wheels will have fallen off, except they won't let the wheels fall off because they get paid to do what they do. At some point, their team nutritionist or whoever will step in and be like, oh no, your performance is suffering. This is not acceptable anymore. It is such nonsense. There has never been a vegan society in the history of the freaking world. And people love to come to me and they're like, well, what about Rich Roll? Rich Roll is a runner and he's an endurance athlete and he's been vegan. Yes, I know people who are personal friends with Rich Roll and his supplement regimen every month, you can't afford. I assure you, you can't afford it. It is impossible to get to meet all of your micronutrient needs with a whole food vegan diet. You are forced to supplement. We're talking $1,000 a month plus of supplements if you want to be a super athlete on vegan, okay? So that's the other bullshit thing that they did. They're making people feel bad like they need to switch to plant-based. You try. Here's the thing. You want to get in a fist fight with me? Then meet me in person and tell me that I should expect some poor inner city kid living in Detroit with, with that's a food desert where his grocery store is 7-Eleven and we tell him to switch to plant-based. Plant-based is only an option for the richest of the rich, okay? This is a wealthy problem. This is Leonardo DiCaprio, James Cameron, Arnold Schwarzenegger, NFL players, whatever. They have the luxury of going plant-based and taking all these supplements. Plant-based is not designed for human beings. It simply is not. It is terrible for overall human health unless you have the means to supplement like crazy and get the highest quality foods and eat 10 pounds of vegetables every single day and supplement with flaxseed and tofu and whatever the hell else and multivitamins and omega-3s from algae. You need algae supplements and spirulina tablets and chlorella and blah, blah, blah. Fuck you. I don't want to hear it right? This is such nonsense. This is such an elite thing to do. This is where I really start talking about politics and change in the world and school lunch program. Meatless Mondays. Let's talk about Meatless Mondays, everybody. Do you know who that hurts more than anybody in the world? The poorest children in America. There are kids whose only meal of the day is lunch, is school lunch. Their only meal of the day is school lunch. Now you want to incorporate something like Meatless Mondays. That Meatless Mondays that, the only protein these kids get in their diet might be from their school lunch. And now you take it away from them. The most micronutrient foods on planet Earth are all animal proteins, whether it's organ meats, red meat, poultry, fish, whatever. These are requirements. They are essential for human survival. Omega-3 fatty acids, fat is essential for human survival. Protein is, is essential for human survival. All the micronutrients are the most bioavailable in animal proteins. This is irrefutable. Even the smartest vegan doctors in the world can't argue this, right? It's basic biochemistry. Now we start this plant-based movement. All we are doing is making the rich richer and more healthy and making the poor poorer and more sick. It's disgusting. If you support this and you have not done the level of research 
necessary to make that decision, you are an irresponsible person. I have zero patience for this, everybody. I have zero patience. You see a documentary or read a BuzzFeed article and you decide that plant-based is the answer and you start preaching this, you need to, yeah, I don't want to advocate violence, so I'm not even going to finish that sentence. But you need to literally reassess the way you live your life. You are the problem. So that's my take on the game changers, but what else we got here? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, again, Amber, but the thing is, I watch it and can totally understand why people are questioning everything they consume now, but I know better. Exactly. That's the thing is people really don't know. They don't understand biochemistry. Here's the thing. I have a rant about this that I edited. I'm going to put out on Instagram. It's a one minute clip. Everyone is taking advice from sick people. That's the thing. Guys like me. Hey, what's up, everybody? Mm, look at me flex my biceps because mm, I can rep you, right? Guys like me get attacked on the internet as if I'm trying to kill people, right? Oh my God, that guy Justin is telling people that they should eat less carbohydrates and they should eat more animal, more grass-fed beef. He's trying to kill people. Look at him online deadlifting 400 pounds and in great shape and super healthy with a ton of energy all the time. And then we go to work and 90% of the people you're surrounded by are fat as shit and they're all telling you how to be healthy, right? Well, my doctor says that eggs raise cholesterol and I'm a type 2 diabetic and I have to take insulin because carbohydrates, we need carbohydrates for our brain. Duh, it's idiocracy. If you've never seen the movie Idiocracy, go watch the movie Idiocracy. This is what we live in now. It is the blind leading the blind and the blind with their egos spewing their advice on all their friends. You should trust me. My doctor said my husband is a nutritionist and he is 250 pounds overweight, but he's a nutritionist, <laughs> right? This is insanity. Dietitians, like 65 plus percent of dietitians are at least 30 pounds in America. That's what we're dealing with. Dietitians are some of the most unhealthy people in America, okay? Understand this. This is why it's so easy to pull the wool over people's eyes. James Cameron has to do with these plant-based um, uh, documentaries. He's invested $140 million of his own money in plant-based proteins. $140 million of his own money. Do you think he has a financial interest in spreading, quote-unquote, awareness for plant-based diets? Do you think? Holy crap, the game changers come out, and all of a sudden, James Cameron launches his own vegan plant-based protein? What do you know? This is just amazing. Guys, I could rant about this shit forever. Forever. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <sighs> Drives me nuts. All right. Let's see what we got here so I don't rant on this all day. Uh, Federal question. So we talked about that. We talked about game changers. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk on this because of uh, Anthony J. This was actually one of the questions that I have here. I think... Um, so this person that wrote this, you may have you may have already asked me this question. Kim, this might have been yours. So somebody sent me the same question that you asked about flax seeds and paleo powder. So uh, I'll read this question. It says, hi, Justin. I'm in, the middle, I'm in the middle of the Dr. Anthony J interview. Really amazing so far. At the part where you are discussing flax, I know you have flaxseed powder listed as an ingredient in your perfect paleo powder and was wondering if you could go into detail if you see evidence that the benefits of including flax outweigh the estrogenic downsides. Is your flax powder process in a specific way to remove the lignans? Also, if you can disclose this, will your new formulations be including flax powder? Flax has come up on my food sensitivity testing that I have had done in the past, so I'm curious. Yes, so if you were halfway through the episode, then I'm assuming you finished it by now, and I actually explain this, and I go into detail. I talk about the new paleo powder. You guys know this about me. What I just talked about with the game changers, that is called not being transparent. That's called being an asshole right? So with me as a CEO, I am transparent 100%. You guys know that I'm currently liquidating inventory. I have products that failed in the marketplace that I need to get rid of. I have a new paleo powder that is coming out. I have learned things along the way. Guys, I eat about 90% carnivore right now. I really do. I don't eat any green vegetables in my daily diet. I just don't, right? Now, I used to eat over a pound and a half of broccoli every single day, right? Literally every day, ate over a pound and a half of broccoli. I have told you guys time and time again, Clovis is my life. I am Clovis, literally. And I am sharing my experience with you, which means as I learn new things, I will teach them to you. I first invented the perfect paleo powder in my kitchen and included flaxseed in 2014. Then I remade perfect paleo powder in 2016 and launched it in 2017. Now at the time, I was a big, big fan of flaxseed. 
I am no longer a big, big fan of flaxseed, right? Now, that said, I don't think that it is hugely problematic. And Dr. Anthony J and I go into this in depth in my, my episode where, so as I said in the beginning, soy is one of the most estrogenic compounds on planet Earth. Flaxseed is behind it, but soy is far greater. Flaxseed is behind it as being super estrogenic, but the type of phytoestrogen is different. Soy contains isoflavones. It is a phytoestrogen called isoflavones that virtually no human being can break down in the gut. So I believe this is inedible for humans. It should not be consumed by humans. Flaxseed is a different story. Flaxseed contains phytoestrogens called lignans. Now, I wanna be clear here. In a healthy human metabolism, lignans are not a problem. They are benign. The bacteria that we have can break it down. Normal stomach acid can break it down. No problem. Lignans are literally not to be worried about. Again, details matter. Lignans are not to be worried about if you have a healthy human metabolism. So I have looked at the whole of all the data as I was coming up with this new paleo powder. And I said, okay, 82% of people in America are some form of insulin resistant. Over 100 million people, a full third of the population are pre-diabetic and diabetic. Um, 85 plus percent of the population is overweight and obese. Over 50% of all Americans have at least one chronic disease. And at least 25% of all Americans have at least two chronic diseases. Now these chronic diseases are metabolic in nature, which makes them basically autoimmune conditions. Right Now, if we look at autoimmune conditions, at the heart of that is leaky gut syndrome. You cannot have an autoimmune condition without having leaky gut, right? So I know this to be true. Now, there's no shot that somebody with leaky gut and autoimmune conditions should be trying to break down lignans in a healthy diet, right? So I'm sure there are plenty of Clovis people that are plenty healthy enough to consume flaxseed and have no problems with it. But I keep seeing more and more people showing up with flaxseed on these food sensitivity tests. And I really, really think that it's because of leaky gut syndrome. So if I sit here and say, I think probably freaking 80% of the population has leaky gut syndrome, and I know that over 85% of the population has some kind of metabolic dysfunction, why would I put flaxseed in this new powder? So to answer your question, the newest version of the Perfect Paleo powder, I don't know when that will come out. I have to sell out of this current inventory first. Um, But the new Perfect Paleo powder will not contain flaxseed. That said, I'm going to continue taking paleo powder every single day. Paleo powder goes in my coffee every day. I literally ordered my own single serving samples to my house because I don't store paleo powder at my house. I have it in warehouses. Got a bunch of single serving samples because I leave for Rhode Island tomorrow and I never travel without my paleo powder. Doesn't bother me in the least. I think it's not going to cause problems for a lot of people, particularly people who have been clovis for some time, who have healthy guts, healthy metabolism. And again, lignans shouldn't be a problem, but of course they will be for some people. As I've said before, it would be impossible for me to make an approved foods list for clovis or make a powder that is suitable for everyone. It would contain zero ingredients. I mean, I know people with the craziest food sensitivities, food sensitivities to eggs, food sensitivities to cacao, food sensitivities to vanilla, food sensitivities to coconut oil, whatever, right? There's food sensitivities to everything. There's no way for me to make something that works for everyone. Um, but that said, two of the change, I told Anthony J this, two of the changes I'm going to make is flaxseed will be out of the new formula and I will be switching to two pound tubs and I'll be using the number two um, recyclable cyst uh, recyclable number, that little recycle sign on plastics. You want to be looking at either two or five. If you have to use plastic and there's no way for me to put this in glass, it's just not feasible. Um, but if you have to use plastic, you want recycling number two or five. So I told that to Anthony J. He literally changed my products. So, um, yeah, there will be different things there in the future. What else we got here? Uh, I used to believe the vegan propaganda because it suited my beliefs. That's what everybody does. We live in echo chambers now. And that's thanks to Facebook algorithms and Google ads and all these different things. You know, it's it's been proven that they keep you in an echo chamber. They keep you in an echo chamber and they want to seed, sow the seeds of discontent, as they say. It's if you are really harsh and saying really negative things, your post will get more attention um, because the engagement, whenever you start a debate in a comment thread, your post goes up and up and up. More people see it, more people see it because it's engagement. That's why I always tell you guys, click the like button, click the happy button, click the heart button, click the wow button, click the button, comment, 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 like each other's comments, share on your page, tag your friends. This is all engagement, right? So if I say something horrific, like, you know, vegan parents are murderers, right? If I put up a post that says that, I'm going to get a ton of backlash, a zillion comments. And everyone's like, I'll show him this son of a bitch. I'm going to yell at him and I'm going to call him mean and rude and nasty and blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting here going, 
you've played right into my hand, you dummies, right? Because you are just pushing my post up and more eyeballs are on my post, the more engagement there is. This is why I tell you guys all the time, click the love. I'm just the only one who's not lying about this shit, right? I want you to comment and argue and do whatever you need to do on the comment thread, comment on my post as much as you can because that gives me more engagement. That's how the algorithm's set up, you know? It's crazy. All right, Kayla's tagging more people. Awesome, love it. I can't remember what I was just ranting about. God, these, these get so ranty so quick. All right, let's see. This is a good one. I like this one. Um, it says, hi, Justin. Now that the clocks have turned back, I am driving home from work in the dark. The lights from oncoming traffic cannot be good for my brain health and hurt my eyes. Do you know if it is okay to drive with any of the blue light blocking glasses on? The dark red ones come with a warning to not drive, but I'm speaking more specifically to the amber colored ones or the clear transition glasses. Any other tips for dealing with super bright LED headlights in oncoming traffic? Unfortunately, can't change my work hours at this moment. Thank you for your insight. 100% yes. You already answered the question. You named all my favorite things in this episode. Uh, I use True Dark uh, glasses. Let me see. I don't have the yellow ones near me. But uh, to give an example, these are the True Dark transitions. So I never wear them on videos because, as you can see, there is a tremendous glare on these. But these block about 40% of blue blockers uh, of, of blue light, and they look great. I mean, in public, I just look like Clark Kent, Ooh, Superman, mm -hmm. right? So I wear these in public so I look studious and people think I'm smart and stuff, right? But I can wear these in public and nobody even knows that they're blue blockers. They're great. Um, you could also absolutely wear these while, while driving because they're completely clear. But again, if you're driving home from work and you're about to go to bed at night or something like that, absolutely wear the Daywalker Elites. Now, the other thing is these are the true dark transitions. The reason they're called transitions is because you step outside and they gloss over and become sunglasses. Not super dark sunglasses, but they tint. They, they actually transition when you walk outside, you come back inside and they transition again, right? So these are fantastic. I absolutely love these. And if you guys are I Am Clovis members, you get 10% off all True Dark glasses. So really cool. You get a discount on those just by being an I Am Clovis member. Um, I wish I had my Daywalker Elites uh, near me. Um, those are just black rimmed and amber. And I will tell you this, like to give an example, uh, I totally drive with these and I wear them on planes as well. So I have them with me tomorrow as I'm flying to Rhode Island, even during the day, I put them on. Fluorescent lights are terrible for you, everybody. Like they're really just awful for you. We talk about like um, infrared is like low laser light therapy. Like light therapy is a really serious thing. It penetrates the skin, it changes you on a cellular level, right? So you have to be careful to block these things, particularly with all the receptors in your eyes. So junk light, like nasty fluorescent junk light, if you're working in a cubicle, you should probably have the amber glasses on all day. And you know, your coworkers will look at you weird, but all these buildings with fluorescent lights, freaking terrible for you. So when I'm on a plane, I wear my, at least wear my transitions, if not wear the ambers. And yeah, people look at you weird, whatever. They just think you think you're Bono from U2 or whatever with your fancy yellow glasses on. But I don't care. I just smile back at them, maintain eye contact until I think I'm dead and they look away very quickly. <laughs> but yeah, you can totally wear these at night. I think it's totally safe. And um, you get a discount if you're I Am Clovis. If you're not an I Am Clovis member, get in there. Can't wait to share this with my newest vegan friends. Yes, you should totally share this. My son was vegan for nine months and felt great until he didn't. Now he's basically carnivore. 100%. This is the thing. So Dr. Anthony J and I talk about this. It, again, if you haven't listened to this Anthony J podcast, you really have to, but he explains this, particularly people that eat a lot of soy. He's like, it depends on your DNA. There are some people that are equipped to handle soy, but it's all short term, right? So what happens is he said, for some people, they won't notice the negative effects, the negative impact of a vegan diet for years. Guys, Google this, literally just go to Google and type in YouTube vegan starts eating meat or YouTube vegan starts eating fish or YouTube vegan changes mind, blah, blah, blah. There are all these huge vegan influencers that are now basically because when you go vegan for multiple years, let's say you're vegan for two years and very public about it on YouTube and you have millions of little freaky vegan followers and they're all like, oh my God, you're amazing. You are forced to come out eventually with your big bags under your eyes and you're pale. And if I poke you, you'll have a bruise for seven weeks, right? All these ridiculous things. You're smushy, you're skinny fat, all this terrible stuff. You sleep like shit. And eventually you got to come out and say, guys, I'm so sorry, my vegan army of cult followers. I had to start eating meat again because I was going to die. I went and saw a doctor and did blood work and they were basically like, if you don't start eating meat, you're going to die. So fuck your Facebook channel and your YouTube channel. You better figure this out, right? This is what happens. Long term, the wheels fall off. If you are switching from a standard American diet to anything, you're going to get healthy. 
anything whole food, plant, plant-based, or carnivore, right? But then what happens is they've wrecked their gut so much with all the lectins and anti-nutrients and all these plants they've been eating every day, they basically have to switch to the ultimate elimination diet, which is the carnivore diet. The carnivore diet shouldn't be necessary. It's only necessary because people's immune systems are completely screwed, right? People are so unhealthy. There's so much metabolic disease that they need carnivore. It's really crazy. This is Carnivore shouldn't have to be a thing. Carnivore is a thing because it's saving people's lives because they're so unhealthy, right? It's crazy, everybody. So this is the thing. People switch to vegan and they feel great, dot, 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 until they don't. And this is there's so many cases of this. Just start Googling this. You guys will see this stuff everywhere, right? Judy, I find that I eat less vegetables to get my carbs. My carbs come from paleo powder, eggs, bacon, chicken, grass-fed beef, chicken, and seafood. Amazing. I love that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I would say virtually the only carbs I get every day come from either paleo powder or a little bit of dark chocolate. I have a few cubes of uh, dark chocolate every night. I love that. So to give you an example of, of my carnivore thing, like I eat avocados, I eat Bubby's pickles, I eat Bubby's sauerkraut, a um, little bit of dark chocolate, and I drink black coffee. That's that's it. That is the extent of me going non-carnivore these days. But I'm not saying you have to do that. Guys, I have been experimenting with my nutrition for 17 years, okay? I am doing what is right for me. That does not mean it is right for you. That does not mean you have to do what I do. You absolutely don't. But what I will say about the vegan thing is if you are switching to vegan for any health reasons or for any quote unquote save the environment reasons, you are simply wrong. You are simply misinformed. This I don't use definitive statements often, everybody. You are definitively wrong. You are damaging the environment in a significant way and you are damaging your health in a significant way. If you wanna take the Taoism approach or the Buddhist approach where you simply will do no harm to animals, one, I better not catch you slapping a mosquito dead when it lands on your arm because you're contradicting yourself, okay? If you, want to take, if you want to play that game, let's be honest about it. So don't go killing any bugs. And if you really just don't want to kill anything, then you need a very hefty supplement schedule, very expensive supplementation regimen to make this work for you long term. I promise you. So you got to decide priorities here, man. It's crazy. If you think you're saving the environment, you're absolutely batshit fucking crazy. It's, monocropping is like the worst thing on planet Earth for the environment. Then we have vegans making things like, like literally people will walk around like, look at my vegan purse, my vegan glasses holder. It's pleather. It's made out of plastic. You're destroying the environment. What is the matter with you? Do you know what happens if you take a 100% a leather jacket and throw it in the woods? It degrades everybody. Bacteria and bugs eat it because it's literally skin from an animal. What do you think happens when an animal dies? It magically disappears. How? It's consumed by the ecosystem. Throw a leather jacket into the wilderness and the same thing will happen. Throw your bullshit vegan pleather whatever the fuck into the woods. It's going to be there a hundred years later, you dummy. Okay, more vegan rants. Sorry. <laughs> what else we got here? All right, so this week I changed my schedule and now do a 40-minute walk at 6 a.m. in the cold and then take a cold shower after. It takes me about three hours after my shower to get warm. Is this good or bad? That's fantastic. That's the whole point. The whole point of cold exposure is adaptation. Wonderful, right? Now, don't be afraid. You can layer up or whatever. I actually have to explain this to adults. It's so funny to me. Uh, I've explained this multiple times that people ask if like putting on a sweatshirt after a cold shower is cheating. No, okay. So putting hot water on yourself after a cold shower is cheating. This is an external heat source that's going to heat up your core body temperature. Your body no longer has to adapt by itself. If you put on a sweatshirt or a blanket or something like that, your body is still the heat source. It has to put out enough heat by the blanket or the sweatshirt and held in to heat up your body. But you're still adapting. You still have to eat up, heat up. Yes, you'll heat up a little bit quicker than if you were to get out of the cold shower and run around naked for the next hour. You'll be shivering like mad for an hour, right? Might be too much damage. Right? It might not be great for you. But yeah, it's totally cool. And it does take a long time to get warm sometimes. That's why I usually have my coffee. I take a cold shower, then I do my meditation. So about and then I do journaling and yeah, so probably about 30, 45 minutes after my cold shower is really where I, where I really have coffee. Um, what else we got here? 
All right, total change in topic, but I've been wondering, and I'm sure you've answered this somewhere already, sorry in advance, regarding the electrolyte mix, what can I use instead of no salt? It looks like it contains potassium chloride, potassium bitartrate, adipic acid, silicon dioxide, mineral oil, and fumaric acid. Wait, really? That's interesting to me. I don't know that, uh, 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 does I thought it contained far less than that. I thought it was mostly just potassium chloride. Um, but yeah, I mean, all you're looking for is potassium chloride. So that's what you want. And the dosage and everything on no salt is literally based on that. Um, I have no problem with no salt, to be honest. Um, and I know that I, I check these ingredients. I mean, I'm a total ingre ingredient label, uh, you know, detective or whatever. But yeah, I mean, whatever. If you want to get sodium chloride from somebody, it's, it's like um, this brand, like Morton. This is a uh, fine sea salt. They have a no salt. I mean, no salt is a very common thing, just the potassium chloride. So that's what you're looking for. Um, can now foods potassium chloride? Yes, absolutely. And then I use natural calm if you're interested in the magnesium, but you can use like mag magnesium capsules. Pure encapsulation has one, all sorts of things, right? So you're just trying to get those electrolytes is, is all there is to it, right? You're trying to get sodium, you're trying to get magnesium, and you're trying to get pe and potassium. So it's really not a huge deal how you get them. I just like to use super, like no salt. I can tell people, walk into the grocery store, get no salt. I can tell people, walk into the grocery store, get Himalayan sea salt. I can tell people, walk into the grocery store, get Redmond sea salt. Like if you walk into Whole Foods, they're going to have Redmond sea salt. Average grocery store, maybe. I've seen, I've seen Redmond at like middle of nowhere grocery stores randomly, but I don't, but then I've been in like big grocery chains and they don't have Redmond's. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to make things as easily accessible for the masses. Like we talked about Detroit, right? I want somebody in Detroit to be able to make an electrolyte mix preferably, right? So that's the, that's the thing that I'm doing here. I'm trying to walk that fine line of high quality, but also accessible to everybody. Okay. What else we got here? All right. So I sit all day in front of a computer under fluorescent lights. Yeah, exactly. So you need to, uh, a couple things, install Iris, I-R-I-S on your computer immediately. Install Iris on your computer, set it to automatic, and then set it to, to health. And if you're working late at night, you can switch it to sleep mode, which is amazing. Um, so I have Iris running on my computer right now because at past 8 p.m., it's late at night for me in terms of working on the computer. So install Iris 100% on your computer. Do that immediately i r i s pay for the premium buy it have iris on your computer for the rest of your life get yourself some blue blocker glasses if you're not a member of i am clovis get into i am clovis because your 10 percent discount if you get the transitions and the elite walkers your 10 percent discount you just paid for your own clovis membership the i am clovis exclusive discounts are insane everybody if you're not in there i don't know you're, you're snoozing on it um if the, uh, there's a video in i am clovis if your i am clovis membership is not making you money you're doing it wrong so there you go. Um, but yeah, you need to protect yourself against this stuff big time. If you're sitting in front of your computer all day, other fluorescent lights, you really, really need to take take uh, care of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amber, just get on Google. Just literally just search Iris Mac or Iris Windows or Iris App Windows, whatever, and it will pop up. Um, it's like, it's the only app that I know of called Iris and it's super popular. So literally just Google. Um, what else we got here? All right, cool. So I've run out of, Live comments. If you guys have anything else you want to chime in on, let me know. Let me see what I have here. I have other questions. Let's see. Okay, so this was a good one, and I'm going to go into this in depth in this podcast that will be released in a couple of weeks. So um, it's going to take some time for me to get that out. I have a bunch of podcasts lined up. I have test two testimony podcasts. I have Cassie Wilde, The Carnivore, coming on. I have Dr. Wes Hendricks, former chiropractor, now gymnastics mobility badass. Um, and now I have Will Clyden of Ohio Energetics and CBD, but this was a direct question about CBD. It says, if someone suffers from a seizure disorder and wants to try CBD, how do you use it in conjunction with medicine or no medicine? I know you're not a doctor, but it's really hard to find people who would talk about how they use it, but I always hear it helps seizures. Yes, okay, so obviously, if you guys aren't familiar with my content, part of the reason why Clovis exists is my niece was born terminally ill and was having 300 plus seizures a day. This was my introduction to the therapeutic use of the ketogenic diet for the treatment of epileptic seizures. Turns out my niece was not epileptic, so it did not really work for her. She is something different. It's called KCNQ2, which is extremely, extremely rare. If you want to Google it and have your heart be broken, um, then just Google KCNQ2, those letters, KCNQ2. And um, 
Yeah. So anyway, I hate talking about that, but, um, yeah. So seizure disorders, uh, we did try CBD. My brother was actually part of the reason why CBD was legalized in Tennessee. He was on the news and showing the baby on the news and showing the baby to politicians and blah, 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 and trying to make change happen because, you know, CBD has this legality issues. Not anymore. There's only three States right now, Idaho, Nebraska, and South Dakota where it's not legal. But, um, so as you said, I'm not a doctor. I cannot touch on the medicine side of this. I really can't. Um, I will say that there was a time in Savannah's life when she was off any and all medications. Um, they were using CBD with her. I tell you that story, but I cannot give you any medical advice. That's not medical advice. And you take that advice, you know, take that information. If you do anything with it, it's at your own risk. I really can't touch on the medicine side of things. But here's the issue with CBD. One, and I can tell you this definitively, it's taken me two years of podcasts to even talk about CBD because the market is bullshit. It is complete and utter garbage bullshit. These products have arsenic in them. They have carriers that are terrible. They have these damaged trans fats and oxidized fats that people are carrying CBD in. The bioavailability of the most of these products, a good bioavailable product is 10%. To give an example, Ojai Energetics that I just had on the podcast, 120% bioavailability. They have patents on this. They are the best of the best. They work with the U.S. government, right? This is insanity. So, I mean, it took me two years to find somebody who knew what they were talking about in the CBD space. And I know a ton of people in the CBD space, right? And I'm telling you, like, Ojai is the only company that I know of that does batch testing on every single batch, you can get a certificate of analysis that traces the bottle that you bought back to the specific batch test that they did for purity. They are the only company that I know that does this. You might have a company that's been selling CBD products for three years and they're on their 500th batch and you ask for a certificate of analysis and they give you one from their very first batch that they ever did. This is shady shit, everybody. I don't like non-trans, non, uh, uh, non-transparent non companies. I don't like that. That's why I haven't worked with any CBD companies up until this. Now, the thing to remember with the seizure disorders, and this is true of everybody, to turn on the endocannabinoid system, the reason why nobody knows what they're talking about is because the endocannabinoid system was discovered in the human body in 1991. This is brand new, brand new stuff, right? People really don't know much about it. So discovered in 1991, and at the time, marijuana was and still is, cannabis was and still is a Schedule One drug, so we couldn't even run tests on it, right? But if you go to PubMed, there's now a ton. You can go to PubMed and type in like cannabis, anything, and find a ton of stuff. But the thing is, all these companies are selling you five milligrams, 10 milligram dose, 20 milligram dose. You need like 500 milligrams a day loading phase to even turn on the endocannabinoid system in the body. There's so much misinformation about CBD. It almost makes me want to rant like I rant about vegans. It just drives me nuts. And I know people using topical creams and vaping and swallowing this and drinking teas and CBD chocolate. Guess what, everybody? You're wasting your money, significantly wasting your money. I promise you, you would be hard pressed. I hope people do it. I hope people listen to this episode and try to say my CBD brand is good, but my CBD brand is this. My C I promise you, I will contact that manufacturer and I will shoot holes in what they're doing. That's how I feel about CBD right now. It's the wild freaking West. So in terms of seizure disorders, you would need to, you'd be talking about like mega doses of CBD. You know, I would say, uh, if, if it were me again, this is not medical advice. You'd be looking at like at least 500 milligrams of CBD, CBD, uh, per day, uh, to turn on the endocannabinoid system. Now that does go down over time. It's like a loading phase and then you need smaller and smaller doses, but Will and I will go in depth on this in the CBD episode that we did. And that'll be out in a few, um, in a few, uh, what you call it, weeks or whatever. So I just need to decide which ones I want to put these out. And you guys can kind of vote on this too. If you're like, hey, I want the CBD, um, I want the CBD episode first, or I want the West Hendricks episode first. So I got to figure out how I want to stack these things and release them. But I want to get the CBD one out because it was absolutely incredible. No salt contains all the things Becky listed. Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's tricky. It's the, like I said, it's the, the fine line between you know, if, if I had you getting sea salt, I want everybody to be taking Redmond sea salt in terms of supplementation. But I know, I know that the vast majority of Clovis people are taking like 
pink Himalayan salt or, and pink Himalayan salt is just, that's not a brand, right? Most pink Himalayan salt also tests positive for microplastics. Um, a lot of normal, fine Mediterranean sea salts test positive for microplastics. Like Kalima sea salt talks a lot about this. Kalima is Celtic sea salt and they are negative of all microplastics and they test extensively third party lab testing. So it's like all the salt in my house is like super specific. I honestly use no salt. Um, I guess I could look into a potassium chloride, um, you know, something different. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A substitute. So yeah, I'll take a look at a substitute. Maybe we can adjust things that way. Um, I don't have a huge problem with it. Not, not the end of the world. So again, I think about it like this, like if you're living a Clovis life, that is, you know, a minuscule little thing, but yeah, if we can, if we can eliminate any of these things that are no good, so I can do a deep dive on those, um, on those ingredients, see which ones are problematic. And then I can update uh, based on that, as you guys know, this is my journey as well. So as I learn new information, I'll just share with you guys. Um, is Sun Oil still a good company for CBD? I have no idea. Look, th there's no way for me to, this is one of those things people bring their brands to me and I'm like, I got no idea. I mean, I, there's, there are, there are literally probably a millions of CBD oil companies at this point. So like when you say Sun Oil, I've never heard of that. But, and to be clear with you, Jessica, I don't use CBD products. I will now, <laughs> absolutely. Now what I know about Will Clyden and Ohio Energetics and what these people are doing behind the scenes. Now, I, there are some things I can't talk about because they have NDAs and things like that. And I mean, it is unbelievable. This is a world changing company. I have never been so excited about a brand ever. I think it's really that unbelievable. Um, I do not use CBD products. I simply don't. I don't trust them. I don't care who tries to tell me their company's good, blah, blah, blah. Again, I, I don't trust it. I This whole time you guys have known me in Clovis, I have not used a single CBD product. There was once upon a time, maybe, I don't know, two years ago or something, uh, where I had a CBD vape. And I loved it, but the problem was I loved it too much and like really just kind of got in the habit of using the CBD vape and I got rid of it. I was like, I don't need this. And I didn't, you know, I started looking into the company. I'm like, ah, I don't know. And I don't like the whole vaping thing, like heating up plastic and metal and all that. So again, we talk about vaping, vaping in the, um, in the episode. It was the company you recommended and the name changed to this. What? Ohio Energetics? Let me see here. So you're saying Ohi Energetics changed their name to Sun Oil, changed their name to Ohi? If that's the case, it could be the same company. And I just, I just only know them as Ohi. Um, but yeah, again, so I don't know. I have not been messing with CBD at all, ever. So this is the first I've heard. I met Will from Ohi in Croatia in June, and I've been chatting with him since June about CBD. So he's never mentioned Sun Oil to me. But yeah, you, you could be right about that if it was sun oil. And then now they're, they're in Ojai, California, which is the name Ojai Energetics. So this could be anything. I know that they took on investment capital. Um, so yeah, no, I can't remember. All right. Yeah. Now I'm just confused. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so I'm very confused here, but I have no idea what sun oil is. So I can't comment on sun oil. Um, what else we got here? Love my red and sea salt. How much time we got? Yeah, we got about five minutes. There was another question I was going to dig into. Um, Let's see. We got any comments? Yeah, we can hit this one real quick. So this was a question about coffee. Somebody's saying, hey, when I was younger, I took pride in being able to drink caffeine all day and go to sleep no matter what time it was. And when I had my last caffeinated drink, as time went on, I had to give up my afternoon caffeine or I would have trouble sleeping. Now being Clovis for a year and a half, I noticed my sensitivity to caffeine has increased. I used to drink two to three 10 ounce cups of coffee. I do French press single origin. In the morning, now if I drink more than one 10 ounce, I feel jittery and not right. This is a long question. Uh, also, now that I'm getting adequate amounts of sleep, I don't seem to reach for my cup of coffee first thing in the morning. And they're asking, are they caffeine sensitive or just no longer in need of it? And what do you think of Swiss decaf? You totally answered your own question. You literally are more efficient on a cellular level. So I try to teach people this. When you first come to me, you are sleep deprived, your sleep hygiene sucks, you are a sugar burner, which means that for every molecule of glucose, you're creating about seven ATP. ATP is the literally the energy currency of the body. All of your cells and everything functions on ATP. So for every molecule of glucose, you're creating about seven ATP. When I switch you over to a fat burner, legit, for every molecule of fat, you're burning, you're, you're creating 36 ATP, more than five times the energy. I literally make you a more efficient energy creation machine. That's what's happening. 
right? Of course you need coffee when you're a sugar burner and you're crashing and burning and you're watching TV before bed and listening to whatever before bed and blue lights in your eyeballs and you don't have blackout curtains or anything. You're sleeping like crap, terrible sleep hygiene. Your nutrition's awful. Yeah, I mean, you answered your question yourself. You literally just make more energy now. Now, I've gone through the same thing. I used to take multiple five-hour energy, extra strength five-hour energies. I would drink them before I got on stage. And then I would drink Jägermeister and Miller Lite and whatever the hell, right? Get off the gig and just fall right asleep, pass out. I was sleeping like shit, but I'd still pass out. In the morning, you bet your ass I needed coffee, right? Of course that changes when you're Clovis. You are literally a more efficient human body. Now remember, every seven years, you are an entirely new being. You have none of the cells in your body are the same. Your cells literally recycle every seven years. Now, fat cells can last like 10 years, so we are the most fat cells. Beast, right? But I mean, you're literally a different human. Your cells are turning over all the time. So think about it. You're a year and a half into Clovis. You're basically a different human. Not to mention if you've done Clovis and you've done some intermittent fasting or maybe some extended fasting and you've enhanced autophagy and apoptosis and cellular death, all these things, you're literally a new human with a new metabolism. So again, epigenetics, we can change DNA. We can change the expression of DNA. So even if you were like a fast metabolizer of caffeine or something like that, we can absolutely change that. You can actually change 23andMe data if you really go crazy enough and there's enough years in between and you mess with things in a significant way, right? You can change the entire expression of your DNA. This is what epigenetics are. So of course it makes sense that your energy systems are working more efficiently. You no longer need coffee. You no longer, Now, I don't drink coffee, caffeinated coffee after 12 p.m. because it will mess up my sleep. I used to take five hour energies literally 8 p.m. before a gig and go to sleep that night, right? So I've had the same experience. I can't do caffeine like later in the day. It'll just totally mess up my sleep. I track it on the aura ring. My deep sleep completely suffers. Um, so yeah, it, this, this makes total sense. I mean, you answered your own question. You are Clovis now. So the thing is, I indulge in coffee because I love it. I don't need it. I, I go days without coffee and I really don't care, right? So it's mentally I care. I miss it. I love black coffee. It is one of my, it's my only thing you could even consider a vice, right? And it's awesome, right? And I'm a total psychopath about the quality of the beans that I get. So I'm sipping on super high quality coffee. I love it. It's like a treat for me. I don't do more than maybe 18 to 20 ounces total of coffee a day. Um, I cut off the coffee intake before noon. If I do do coffee after that, it's going to be ca decaffeinated. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, that about answers the question. I love coffee just because it's coffee, but I don't need it to function. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be something to function. Um, what else we got here? I drink 10 times less coffee, maybe one cup a day. Yeah, a lot of people find that. So the other thing here, the question was uh, Swiss decaf. How do I feel about Swiss decaf? And Swiss decaf is is great, but again, just like anything else, Swiss decaf is, if, for those of you that don't know, Swiss decaf is just a process of making coffee. I totally nerded out on making coffee and where beans are grown and roasting beans. And I've talked to roasters here in Nashville and all these different things. I love the whole process of making coffee. So Swiss decaf is a process of making coffee. But you have to remember with Swiss decaf is they're also shipping this to retail locations. They're shipping this. They white label it. So they send it to other brands that aren't their own brands. And they just, that brand puts it in their packaging and they're like, hey, our decaf coffee is Swiss decaf, right? That's a process of making this decaf coffee. So it's a wonderful process. It's great. But now you're at the mercy of each individual brand and their quality control. So all the same rules still apply. If you're, if you're in a Whole Foods and you pick up a brand that's Swiss decaf, that better have a roast date on it. You want to know your roast date. I tell people not to buy beans where the roast date is past three to four weeks old. Um, this is why I love like counterculture coffee because I get their coffee shipped to my house and the roast date was two days before I received it. That's amazing, right? You want single origin. You want fair trade. You want whole coffee beans. I highly recommend getting whole coffee beans, grinding them yourself um, on the brands that are carrying uh, decaf beans that are Swiss uh, process decaf beans. You still, all the same rules apply, right? Same thing as, you know, God, I, I had this conversation with a client today. I said, if I find out that you're drinking Keurig coffee or Folgers or whatever else, I'm going to fly to your house and introduce you to jujitsu. I actually wrote that in an email today. So this is how I talk to you guys when you're my clients, just so you know, this is how I do things. Right. But I mean, really, I can't think we're talking about phytoestrogens and everything. I can't understand. Like, so let's say you're not even a nerd and worried about estrogenics and all these things like a biochem nerd or whatever, or a health nerd. So 
everyone's heard like this thing where if you have a plastic water bottle and you leave it in your car and the sun's out and it's a hot day, you don't want to drink out of that bottle of water because the plastic is melted from the heat and now you're just drinking plastic in the water. But yet millions and millions of people wake up every day and put a plastic pod in their Keurig and push piping hot water at super high pressure through the plastic, melt the plastic, and put melted plastic water in your coffee mug and drink that shit down. Watching people drink Keurig, man, it makes my skin crawl. I just can't do it. Not to mention that the grounds in there, you don't know where those came from. You don't know the quality, anything about You don't know how long they've been in there. They're sealed in there. You can't see anything. There could be mold in there. You got no idea. Keurig is a freaking nightmare, man. So anyway, now I'm just ranting about plastic again, but that's because we talked about phytoestrogens and estrogenics in this episode. Um, but wanted to touch on this coffee question. It was a good question. And again, just, you know, Swiss decaf, awesome processing method. That's great. Just uh, make sure that you pay attention to the different brands and the retail locations. And, you know, you don't want to buy, even if it's a Swiss decaf processed beans, if you're getting them eight months later and they've been sitting on a shelf that's 100 degrees for eight months, you might have something to worry about with that particular product that you're buying, right? Okay, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is AMA number 91. We touched on a ton of stuff. We talked about electrolytes and coffee and CBD and seizures and all sorts. I can't even remember. Lots of stuff. Oh, blue blockers. Get yourself some blue blockers. Yeah, lots of good stuff. This is a great AMA. You guys' questions are great. Thank you for chiming in with your live comments. Oh, yeah, go get Iris. I'm just scrolling through some comments right now. Go get Iris. I'm going to take a look at No Salt, see if I can come up with a better solution for you guys. I'm sure that I can, probably. Um, what else we got here? Oh, yeah, rabbit hole of vegans. We talked about the game changers. Holy crap, this was an extensive episode. So uh, thank you. Click the like button. Click the love button. Happy face button. Smiley face button. All that. I'm going to duck out. I'm probably going to hammer um, two different podcasts. Yes, Carla. OMG, I never thought of that. I love that you just had that light bulb moment. I cannot tell you how many Clovis people still drink Keurig, and it makes me crazy. Makes me want to literally just sit here and rant a string of profanity at everyone for the next 15 minutes until I can get them to stop drinking Keurig coffee. Okay? Stop it. Deal? Nobody thinks of this. It's mental, everybody. And they're in every gas station, cubicle, office, building, place you go to, the lobby, Keurig, Keurig. And then the Keurig spitting out into a plastic cup. You got it in a plastic cup with that waxy film on the inside like Starbucks. Man, man, man. This is why when I go to Starbucks, I bring my own cup. And I say, don't put that in a plastic cup. Put it in my stainless steel cup, please, because I don't want you to heat up the plastic on your bullshit cups and then me drink it, right? You guys got to be so careful with this stuff. It's just crazy, right? Very important to think about. So anyway, that's it. We're wrapping AMA number 91. Um, yeah, I'm going to put, in case you missed it, podcast from today is going to go up tonight. This AMA is probably going to go up tonight because I, I leave early tomorrow morning for Rhode Island. So you might have two podcast episodes that are going to hit you by tomorrow morning. You'll have, in case you missed it from last week, you have the AMA from this week. And then again, go listen to Dr. Anthony J. You can get all the show notes for Dr. Anthony J at clovis.show slash Dr. J, D-R-J-A-Y, clovis.show slash Dr. J. Crystal, so I guess I drank one when listening. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So um, change that. You know, you don't know until you know. Now you know, know better, do better. That's it. I probably blew up a whole bunch of people's routines today between fluorescent lights and working on computers late at night and driving at night and drinking Keurig coffee and drinking Starbucks out of plastic cups and get yourself a stainless steel thing and go into Starbucks and you get a 10%, I mean, you get a 10 cent discount for using your own cup too, right? So make sure that you do this stuff. Make these little changes. If you're going to be drinking Starbucks coffee, make sure they put it in your own cup. And I would highly recommend ordering espresso. Instead of ordering a coffee, order an Americano, right? Order an Americano. Then you're getting it freshly ground beans and all that. There's steps that you guys can take to make this stuff better. Justin, what if I use my own grounds? This is highly dependent. Everything that I just talked about still stands. Are they fair trade? Are they them? Because if you go to your grocery store and you're buying green mountain beans that were just sitting on the shelf and don't have a roast date on them, good luck. They're probably six to 12 months old and you're still grinding them yourself. But so using your own grounds, it doesn't doesn't tell me a whole lot of, of anything, right? It matters where those grounds come from. So I can't just say like, oh, they're your own? Grounds are good. Like, no, can't say that at all. Really important stuff. Guys, I've been down the coffee rabbit hole for years, years and years and years. I am obsessed with coffee. I love it, okay? So um, I know every single way to skin this cat 
And yeah, you really got to start thinking about these things on something that you put in your body every single day. Every day, most people drink coffee. You really got to think about this, guys. It's super important. So lock down your coffee game, okay? Uh, I should probably do a full AMA just about coffee at some point. But anyway, we're going to wrap for tonight. It's 9.07. I got to get out of here, do some laundry, pack, do all the things, hang out with my mama, and get out of here to Rhode Island tomorrow. Right. Thank you so much for hanging I'll see you. I'll, I'll go live, I'm sure, from Rhode Island and stuff and share some foliage pictures with you. All right, guys. Have a great night. Install Iris. Put on some blue blockers. Turn off the screens. Get some sleep. Love you guys. Good night. Bye.